this is what's occurred up to this point in time and as you can see just looking at the map you know by them coming into Ohio or approaching us in Ohio last year in Michigan was the first entrance into the Midwest where obviously most of our livestock production occurs in, this, in the country. February 2009 is where this really all started. We got a phone call from Mr. Purcelli early February last year saying that they wanted to come to Ohio and would like to work with the Farm Bureau and the commodity groups to eliminate gas station stalls, battery cages in the poultry industry and veal crates in the veal industry. We had that meeting in Columbus. I think OVMA was there, Ohio Veterinary Medical Association as well as several of our commodity groups, Farm Bureau, Mr. Purcelli and, and his entourage uh, you know, wanted to sit down and have the conversation. Well, their view of that meeting was a little different than our view of the meeting. They like to portray that they came to negotiate. They came to, their negotiation is, this is what we want done. Our polling tells us we can have a ballot initiative and pass it just like we did in California. We have the money to make it happen, so this is what we want you to do. So that was the, the extent of the negotiation that occurred during that meeting. We all sat and listened politely, uh, gritting our teeth at times uh, to the arrogance the, that occurred. And everybody left the meeting and saying, you know, we need to discuss it further. So you can see here the things that we've continued to try to point out to people, just who HSUS is. It is not your local humane societies. That point really needs to be driven home with anybody you talk to as far as just who HSUS is. They don't come out and say it, but obviously they're about the elimination of meat, milk, and eggs in their diets. They use emotions to raise money and to achieve their goals. One-sided arguments, folks. When, when you look at what occurred in California specifically, and probably what we're going to be dealing with again in Ohio this coming year, one-sided arguments. They, they will play off people's emotions immensely. One quote I always like to put up here, and I, you know, we, we saw a little bit of that in and, and not direct reference here this morning in some of our conversations. But Mr. Purcelli and this organization has become very smart in how they operate over the last few years. Quote, we'd be foolish and silly not to unite with people in the public health sector, the environmental community, unions to try to challenge corporate agriculture. The only part that it is probably not quite accurate in there is the word corporate. They want to challenge all agriculture because they're, what they're really ultimately about is elimination of milk, eggs, and meat in our diets. Our response, well, as an industry, we came together our commodity groups, and this included corn and soy wheat organizations as well as our livestock groups. We didn't want to allow HSUS to intimidate us. Now, when I say that, you still got to respect them for who they are and the, the amount of the war chest that they have. When they have, you know, a hundred million plus budget, you better respect who they are and not take them lightly. At the same time, we realized we needed to have a unified response. This could not be something that pork, poultry, veal industry could fight on their own. This had to be a complete agricultural industry, livestock industry response. Needed a proactive response as well as take back control of the issue. And the issue being animal welfare, animal care. Because as an industry, we all know we've lost ownership of that several years ago. So our challenge was we had to take this back and be a proactive response. One of the, the questions that I always ask you know, our members uh, within Farm Bureau and, and even most of the producer meetings that I do around the state, when we talk about what occurred last year, was how many people thought that our response and what we did with issue two in Ohio was a proactive or a reactive enterprise. It was about a half and half. You know, most people thought it was a fight with HSUS. Bottom line here, folks, this is a proactive response. This is taking control, doing things that we probably should have been doing many years ago. Agriculture in Ohio, $93 billion uh, industry as far as its effect on our economy within the state. 
some total of over a million jobs. We rank ninth in pork production, fourth in veal, and we're number two in egg production in the country. So the effects of having an HSUS-led initiative for the elimination of these production practices would be devastating to our state. Our plan, proactive approach. Well, we formed a, the Ohio Livestock Care PAC, which was the you know, Farm Bureau, as well as our six major commodity groups. Those are listed down the, the right side there, the soybean, corn growers, pork producers, poultry, cattlemen, and, and dairy producers. Came together to form this corporation, ultimately the PAC. We realized for us to be successful in a campaign, it's going to take paid media, social media, earned media, fundraising strategies, coalition building, obviously accounting and legal support, and our hope was what we designed within the state became a, somewhat of a national model that other states could look at and say, you know, this makes some sense, we need to tweak it to fit our particular situation in our state and start taking back this whole issue of animal welfare, animal care. Also, we had to learn from what occurred obviously in Florida, Arizona, California, uh, in Colorado. Uh, Michigan was going on at the same time. Uh, you know, that we were in, our, in the midst of our uh, campaign. Uh, first thing was to pass the Joint Resolution Number 6, which would allow us to place an amendment on the ballot to put into our Constitution the Issue 2, which would create the Livestock Care Standards Board, which would be a 13-member panel, state how these individuals would be named to, to the board, describes the relationship with the General Assembly, as well as we knew there would be implementing legislation would come uh, if this passed. Why the Constitution? We did get challenged quite a bit. Why would this come into the Constitution? Does it earn you know, that uh, recognition uh, to, to be brought into the Ohio Constitution? Well, the Ohio Constitution isn't like our federal constitution. It, it's a fluid document, has dozen, dozens of boards and commissions uh, represented or defined within our constitution. Uh, you know, some examples, the tuition trust fund, coal development board, and so on. Uh, but the bottom line here is, and what we try to drive home with everybody as we went through the campaign, what about this doesn't affect every citizen within your state? When we start talking about food production, it affects everybody. So what better place to put it within the Constitution to make sure we're, we're securing and maintaining uh, you know, our food production and in, in part of our economy uh, within the state. Board, as I said, 13 members. There's 10 uh, point, direct appointees by the governor, one by the Speaker of the House, and one by the President of the Senate. And then our Director of Agriculture makes the 13th uh, person on the board, uh, which really is, in effect, an appointment by the governor as well. You can see the breakdown. This is what's written in Issue 2 is in our Constitution. There has to be you know, three family farmers, two veterinarians. One uh, will be our state veterinarian, Tony, will, will be sitting on this care standards board, a food safety expert, a local Humane Society representative, two representatives from state farm organizations, dean of our College of Agriculture within the state, and two Ohio consumers. So as you look at the makeup of the board, it's a cross-section of our society within the state. So we feel like we got representation from all aspects of society. What will the board do? The board will set the standards for the care and well-being of livestock and poultry, maintaining food safety, protect locally grown and raised food, make decisions based on facts, science, and data. The standards, and again, these standards are written within issue two, within the Constitution today, what they have to evaluate these standards based on. It can't be on just one discipline area like HSUS would like to have you make those decisions based on animal welfare, period. As to overall animal health, biosecurity, animal disease prevention, food safety, affordability, best farm management practices, and animal morbidity and mortality data will come into play in those decisions as this board sits down and makes decisions. In our campaign, these are the key messages that we try to drive home uh, with our voters in the state. 
locally grown food, excellent animal care, consumer confidence, state's number one industry, keep Ohioans in charge. This was a big one. Keep the decision making local. Keep the decision making within your state, with experts in your state driving and making those decisions, not allowing your outside activist groups to come into your state to help drive policy and make those decisions and obviously support our family farms in Ohio. Some of the, the next few slides we'll go through pretty quick, but uh, you know, the campaign itself, we spent in the campaign uh, a little over four and a half million dollars in our campaign. Now, I want to point out we didn't have a lot of opposition in our campaign from a dollar expenditure standpoint. HSUS stepped back, they came in late uh, trying to drive a wedge through some of the uh, ag groups and some of the, the, the local humane societies within the state, but they did not spend a lot of dollars in our state. But we still spent four and a half million dollars to lay the groundwork to start to earn back some of the confidence with our consumers that we probably have lost over the last several years for a variety of reasons. The biggest thing that occurred was the grassroots efforts. And I cannot emphasize that enough, the amount of the membership within Farm Bureau and our commodity groups got engaged on this issue. Now whether that was because they, they had somebody that they could, could hate and not like and go after an HSUS or those uh, types of groups, or they realized that this was really an opportunity for them to tell their story. But they did get engaged. We had rallies all over the state. We had a rally in, in Columbus. Uh, that's our governor that came in and spoke, and this was carried through most of our uh, major media uh, within the state. Signs went up all over the state. You couldn't hardly drive down any road in the state and not see you know, a, a yes on for issue two sign. Uh, some of the signs got carried away. This steer down here in the bottom picture was even our farm science review, and the, the guy led the steer around the farm science review uh, with that painted on its sign. So, you know, people got engaged, and, and that's really what it was all about, getting our producers engaged, whether, you know, myself, Tony, Jack Fisher, our commodity execs, we can, we're paid employees. The people that really can carry the message and are effective are our farmers. They had to realize that and that's what we drove home with them was how vital it was for our members, our producers to get engaged and carry these messages. The one thing that, that continued to come out over and over again in the meetings as a follow up how many of our members got phone calls from their neighbors, their non-farm members, how should I vote on this? You know, what is this all about? You know, how do you want me to vote? Because this affects you. You know, the credibility that our members got through this initiative was tremendous. And we have to continue to build on that as we go on down the road. The website, door-to-door uh, -door solicitation, again, part of the team, this was not person by any stretch. We had our governor, Senator Voinovich. How many people don't know the guy down in the bottom right hand corner? I think he's been on TV more in this last six months, Tony, than he has, you know, the whole time he's been in DC, uh, you know, Senator Boehmer. Boehmer. Uh, but this was a complete cross section. We had over 500 organizations or leaders that came in and supported this initiative. You know, you've got to have the political support from your, your political parties uh, to be effective in these types of campaigns. We won, obviously. 64 to 36, so very, very strong uh, support for the initiative. 40% voter turnout, 87 out of 88 counties this, this won. So it was across the state that we had tremendous support. 13 counties with less than 60% uh, you know, positive vote or yes vote. Only two counties with less than 55 percent, only one county obviously with less than 50 percent. And the good news is we won all the major urban counties. Cleveland, Columbus, Cincinnati, Toledo, Dayton. We won all those counties that, that those uh, cities are in uh, by a good margin. Lessons learned. What did we learn from what we did last year? 
Well, number one thing was unity. We had to have agriculture unity. Okay, We could not do this, or anybody couldn't do this, if they were able to divide and conquer. I'll share with you just a, a quick comment about our initial meeting uh, with Ms. Wister Purcelli back in February. We had our commodity execs from dairy, cattlemen, pork producers, uh, I think corn was there, Farm Bureau. First thing out of Mr. Purcelli's mouth, well, Mrs. Harsh, which is our commodity exec with the Cattlemen Association, we really don't have a problem with the cattle producers. They do a great job. You know, divide and conquer, folks. His hope was that they could walk out of that room and Elizabeth would have went back to her board and said, man, we aren't on their radar screen. You know, we don't need to participate in this fight because if we participate, they may come after us. Well, they're going to come after all of us. And that was the, the best thing that happened is our cattlemen within the state couldn't have been more supportive. Even though they weren't in the, you know, the, the site today, they realized that if they were to pick us off one by one, they would do that. And that's what they would love to do. Be proactive. We have to own the welfare issue. That's, you know, number one, people need to understand as an industry, we should own that because that's what we've always done. We took it for granted for many years, but we got to get back in front of that and own that issue. Discuss and debate animal rights movement with our farmers and other groups. People don't understand who HSUS is. They don't understand that they have no affiliation with, their, with your local humane society or your local shelters. We have to make sure people understand who they are to be, be effective in this fight. Listen to our consumers and explain our issues. You know, how does this affect everybody? You know, probably one of the biggest lessons that people are learning in California today, it wasn't just about housing issues in California, even though that's what the discussion was and the debate was there a couple years ago. This affected every consumer in the state. They didn't understand when you change something over here, what's the ripple effect over there? They need to understand how all this comes together and how it will affect them personally. Point out the real mission of the animal rights groups. Put a face on agriculture. As I said, the most effective thing that occurred was our members, when I talk about Farm Bureau members, our producers, got engaged. People became, began to know what our farmers, our producers, became to know them better because they'd lost track of them. You know, as most of you have heard many times over, most of our consumers are three to four generations removed from production agriculture. So, you know, we could have that whole another discussion as far as what that means to us and how we need to approach it. One of the slides uh, that, you know, I, I've seen numerous times and I've used, you know, is looking at a, you know, hog farm 25, 30 years ago and you got all your hogs outside, people driving by and they, they see that. Today they drive by, they don't see the hogs, they're in a confinement barn, but that's not the worst part. Down at the end of the driveway, you got a gate up that says stop, do not enter. You know, the person that's four generations removed, well, he knows what's going on back there that you don't want me to see. They don't understand biosecurity because we've never taken time to talk about biosecurity. So we have to put a face back on agriculture. Resources to communicate. As I said, we spent four and a half million dollars in our campaign and we could have easily spent twice that if we wanted to. Got to have resources. The bipartisan political support is a must as well. Engage your congressmen. Engage your legislators. They have to understand again what the importance of agriculture is to their state, their community, to everything, to their consumers, their constituency. They have to understand this and we have to take time to explain it to them. This should not be you know, a partisan issue. This is a bipartisan issue and we need their support. Where we're at today, we're in the process of, of our enabling legislation, pretty far along with that, the selection of the board. Uh, bill was introduced back in January in the House. It passed uh, here just about a week ago or a little over a week ago. Uh, 98 to nothing uh, through the House. 
Senate Bill 233 was introduced in 23rd of February. Hearings are going on currently. Uh, both will spell out or have spelled out the operation of the board. Not a lot of difference, a few little you know, uh, differences between the House version and the Senate version, uh, but we're pretty optimistic they'll get those worked out in, in short order. Uh, again, talks about uh, the naming of the board. There's no compensation to our board members except cover, you know, reimbursement of actual expenses. Terms initially will be staggered one, two, and three years, uh, and then be on a three-year rotation after that. Uh, you know, thing, other things in there, key definitions, what's livestock. Uh, we had some people that tried to, to throw dogs and cats into this definition of livestock, uh, but we were able to keep that out uh, at this point. Uh, gives authority to the board for rulemaking, to set standards, establishes civil fines, and they got the right to establish some subcommittees if they deem necessary. Describes the duties of a director of agriculture, assists the board in, in putting the law into place. The director also will hire employees and enter into contracts if necessary, publish rules, and investigate complaints. This will be a complaint-driven uh, situation or operation. So we're not going to be out on farms inspecting, but as complaints come in, it'll be ODA's uh, job to go out and investigate uh, those complaints as they come in. Clarification of relationship between the Care Standards Board and our humane agents. Okay, the livestock care standards will be civil penalties. Our animal cruelty laws, which our humane agents will oversee and continue to work with, those are criminal penalties. Uh, there'll be exemptions right now within some of the, the verbiage uh, as far as we don't want to be in contradiction to uh, programs that are defined by the USDA, such as organic programs, so our standards can't be in conflict with, with those types of, of programs. Funding's also always an issue. Uh, you know, it's estimated to, to get the board established going to take about 104, or excuse me, 160, 170 thousand uh, dollars. The House version ended up uh, putting that totally on the back of our director and the Department of Ag to, to come up and figure out where those funds are all currently at within their, their budget. I think they'll probably take it from Tony's salary, but uh, you know, I don't. <laughs> but no, those those things are currently being worked out. The uh, the Senate version. Uh, has it covered or pulling funds from a, another uh, place, uh, but we won't get into that. But those are some of the, the minor things that I think are be, going to be debated and get worked out here in the coming weeks. Uh, at that point, you know, will be the selection of the board. Uh, the general, excuse me, the general assembly will have to obviously come up with a version of both the House and the Senate can agree upon, and the board will get appointed. The governor, by what's written today in both versions, would have up to 45 days to name the board. But we're anticipating once this legislation gets approved by the General Assembly, the governor, he'll be pretty quick to, to get that board appointed. Uh, those uh, nominations and recommendations and applications have been coming in since November to his office and the Speaker and the President of the Senate. So we, we really anticipate that that will happen very, very quickly once the General Assembly comes up with language that they both can agree upon. We've got to continue to monitor HSUS. Does this go away? You know, it ain't over. You know, uh, I don't know how many of you are familiar with what's going on in Ohio now, but we got HSUS activities going on as we speak. Uh, I probably have gotten at least a dozen emails already today on various activities they have going on. They're going to pursue a ballot measure, possibly November of 2010. It could be 2011, uh, but they're in the process of getting all their ducks in a row to put a ballot measure on for November of 2010. They have registered a number of paid petition drive supervisors to gear up for this. They filed petition language with our Attorney General's office uh, earlier this year, back in early February. Uh, the language was approved, was kicked to the ballot board for their approval on the language. Uh, it was approved there. So they are officially up and running to collect signatures across the state that would allow them to put a ballot initiative on for this November. They have till June 30th to collect a little over 400,000 uh, registered voter signatures. Uh, their goal is to collect somewhere in the neighborhood of 600,000 plus. Uh, so that they can assure themselves they'll have the 400,000 
uh, roughly names that they need uh, to go on. Now, in doing this, even if they achieve this goal, it's not a definite that they're going to be there this fall. In all reality, they probably will be, uh, but you know, they could hold off these signatures until 2011 if they really wanted to. So we're not as totally sure they're going to be there, but uh, if I were a betting man today, it's probably going to happen because they're they are gearing up pretty aggressively across the state to get these signatures done. What they've done in their petition language. They want to define for the Care Standards Board what are minimum standards for inhumane treatment. Guess what those standards are? Elimination of gas station stalls, battery cages, veal crates are the big ones. Okay, and this is some of the language that, that they have in there, which is you know, their traditional thing. They want to stand up, full extend their limbs, turn around, uh, or their buzzwords and the key phrases that they continue to use. They also put in their requirement to ensure that all farm killing, not euthanizing, but killing, on farm killing of animals, it will be performed in a humane manner using methods explicitly deemed acceptable by AVMA. Specifically, put in this next line, prohibit strangulation of cows and pigs as a form of euthanasia. Anybody know why that would be specific to Ohio. <laughs> Anybody seen death on a factory farm? That was a video taken a few years back of a hog producer in Ohio that showed him strangling and hanging us out. What do you think we're going to have on our, flashed across our TV probably, you know, seven nights a week once we get to this fall if they decide to have this ballot campaign? We'll be seeing that sow quite a bit on TV uh, in their campaign. Uh, other things prohibits the engagement and transport receipt uh, for use in food supply of any basically downer cows. Well, that's a federal regulation. Why is that in there? Well, we'll continue to see that downed cow being pushed around by the skid loader. Uh, so the, these things go hand in hand with how they want to approach their campaign. But this is the language uh, that people will see, you know, on their petition drive.